Welcome to Quick Tip with Joy. Today might not be so quick because there's a lot to discuss with this. Uh, there's, you know, as we know, there's a permanent ink, which is stays on and that I like to use. And then there's a distress ink. So when you're stamping, if you think about your project, what you're going to be doing, and if you're going to be adding wet like watercolor or glue over the top, then you need to use something like stays on. If you're not going to add anything else to it, then you can use your distress ink or distress oxide. So, um, I actually like to start my project with adding a little bit of, and I always stamp the stamp to the, to the um, acrylic block or stamping pad, whichever you may be using. You don't want to leave it too long on there. You do want to use, if you leave this on though, it kind of pro it provides a surface that you can easily use. So um, the, it seems to grip a little bit better to add something else, but if you're insistent on keeping things perfect and clean, if you are changing colors, you may want to use a stamp cleaner. Stays On has an all-purpose stamp cleaner. I don't use it often. I do use it a little bit after I have, um, you know, if I'm changing colors or something, or I really want something to be um, perfect, <laughs> which, you know, I'm a junk journaler, so things aren't quite as perfect. But if you ever do use uh, a distress ink or oxide, you do want to use water and clean off your stamp for sure with that. Now, one of the tricks, if you don't have a stamping platform, let me start with a stamping platform. Um, there's there's a Misty, I believe is what it's called. This one is Tim Holtz's, uh, and it is a tonic. Um, sorry for the shadows. I do want to tell you that this one flips. It's made for rubber or for clear, and all this, this just comes off, and it flips over. It has the little uh, label here that says clear. If you flip this over, it'll say rubber there, and then that way you're using the right side. But the one thing I want to mention is, which I made a mistake of, as you notice, I only have three magnets on here. To, uh, you, if you're just stamping random. You don't have to use the guides that are allowed over here, but you do want to, you know, hold your project down. And I need to get another magnet, but of course they don't make them now, uh, or I can't find them. But you would normally put your, I mean, you can watch Tim Holtz do this. Uh, I, I just want to say that keep the magnets away from each other. I had two of them close. They popped together. They're ceramic on the inside, so it definitely broke it. Anyway, if you want to see how to use the platform, definitely check out Tim Holtz's videos. If you're not using a platform, though, I suggest you use a silicone mat. It gives you extra tooth and grip, and it has a little cush-cush to it. So, um, I actually have underneath here, this is um, flooring, but it has ridges in it. So, the ridges are not good for the stamping, there is a trick to that though. I did find out if you're using flooring, all you would need to do is put your put your image down and let me show you. I'm gonna stamp it again. And I always press in the middle of the, the stamp or the stamp pad. If you're gonna use the flooring, you would press down and then I like to just move the project and then you'll get a little bit clearer image. But using this silicone mat, they make, um, Tim Holtz has one now. This is a Fisker, and I bought it on clearance, so I don't know if they, they probably don't make it any longer. But I wanted to show you that the difference between using, if you're using coffee dyed paper, you can see that this will have little ridges. You can iron your paper. I don't iron my paper, but another way to, um, make sure that you're getting a clearer image. The bi the bigger the image, the it seems like when I buy the bigger uh, silicone, well, or rubber. I mean, I bought Tim Holtz's new one, and I was very disappointed because it didn't do what I thought it was. Take it off of the stamping platform or off of this and use it to stamp down and then just work yourself up and down before you take it up. That's my suggestion with that. Now this one, the if you're using plain paper, 
that is not necessarily white, but it's flat. It doesn't have any ridges in it. Then it's okay to just, you're pushing flat down. They also make, and I didn't get it out, but um, I know it's over here. <laughs> and it's probably dusty as I'll get out. So here, we'll just, uh, let me. They make uh, one of these that has a little felt piece on it that you can use to go over that way it evenly. The longer you hold it on your project, the better image. Did you see that on this one, I didn't hold it on very long. I may have misstamped, but on if you're using coffee dyed, you're gonna have a little bit harder time um, getting it to absorb. Make sure you have a real juicy pad to start with, and then make sure that you hold it on a little longer than you would want to. I'm gonna stick it over here because I might actually use this. Leave it on and then use your, if you don't have one of these, I actually made one. Make sure that you're pressing fully on the image and not rocking back and forth. Pull it straight up and you'll see that you get a clear image. The If you don't iron your paper, or even if you do iron your paper, you may not have as clear image. Now, fabric is the same way. Make sure you have the juiciest pad that you can get, and then you're going to hold it on a lot longer than you normally would. Because, and I usually pat around and and I don't let the air get to this very much because I know I need it over here. And I really press it in there and leave it and let it sit for a few seconds because the longer you leave it set, the more it's absorbing into that cotton or the, the fabric. Not necessarily, this one isn't necessarily cotton. Alcohol will clean up, stays on off of your, off of here and it will also clean it up off of your mat here. So you can tell that that's not as sharp of an Im image because it didn't have as much ink, it absorbed down in there, but it still looks nice. And if you want to use your Distress Ink instead, feel free. But these are my um, tips for today. I hope you like them. Give me a thumbs up if you did and uh, subscribe if you would like to see more from me and ring the bell and you'll get the notification to that I'm I'm posted something new. So that's it for today. Tomorrow, come back. I'm going to show you how to fix mistakes. For now, remember your day is full of choices, so choose joy. Bye-bye.